Our Father Cares, a daily YouTube devotional with Christian Bredahl and the Shepherd's Call team. Join us for today's devotional thought. Hello friends, thank you for joining me and I'm so glad that you don't have smell-o-vision in your homes. Now what's smell-o-vision? Well, there is no such thing. Basically, you'd be able to smell, well, what I'm smelling and what I'm experiencing right now, and that's a tremendous amount of garlic. I've been on a cleanse for a couple of weeks now, and uh, today in my drink I had to have five fresh cloves of garlic in 16 ounces of other liquid, and I'll tell you what, uh, if anybody was sitting around me, which of course it looks like I've scared everybody away, uh, they would be being blessed by my antimicrobial and my antibacterial uh, uh, scent that's going from me. <laughs> anyway, that's not why nobody's here. As I mentioned to you before, it's because uh, everyone else has different tasks and my, my wife is having some uh, health issues. So if you would add, add her to your prayer list, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate that. Let's have a word of prayer before we dive in. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask that you would please bless us this morning as we are seeking to understand things on a deeper level, the things of God. Please bless us with the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, what do we have today? I did sneak a peek yesterday. Today, Jesus was a friend to every human being every human being. I love that. Hebrews 10, 9, Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. That really sums up what Jesus was all about, doesn't it? He was here to do God's will and God's will alone. Not his own and not the will of any other man, but only the will of God. Christ's dignity as a divine teacher was of an order higher than the dignity of the priests and rulers. And I don't think many people thought that there was any, any order higher than that of the priests and the rulers of their time. It was distinct from all worldly pomp, for it was divine. He dispensed with all worldly display and showed that he regarded the gradations of society, fixed by opulence and rank as of no value. He had stepped down from his high command to bring human beings power to become the sons of God, and earthly rank was not of the least value with him. You see, he wasn't impressed by the garb that you could wear, the clothing you could wear. He wasn't impressed by the computer that you could have. He wasn't impressed by the car or the home or the money that you had or the position that you, that you actually were uh, holding. He was not interested in that. He was interested in the souls of, of men and women. And that was the most powerful thing for him. The, most, the thing that he focused on the most was to say, how is it with your soul? He wasn't interested in all that you thought you had accomplished because all of that is for naught if we don't even have the Lord. He would have brought them with him 10,000 angels if they would have helped him in his work of redeeming the race. So he would have had everything that he needed to help us. Christ passed by the homes of the wealthy, the courts of the royalty, the renowned seats of learning, and made his home in obscure and despised Nazareth. His life from its beginning to its close was a life of lowliness and humility. Poverty was made sacred by his life of poverty. Interesting. He would not put on a dignity of attitude that would debar men and women, however lowly, from coming into His presence and listening to His teaching. Now, I want to reread, reread that because I didn't read that properly. Um, so I want to start up here where it says His life. His life from its beginning to its close was a life of lowliness and humility. Poverty was made sacred by his life of poverty. That's interesting. So in other words, what he was saying was, you're not less than, you're not like the scum of the earth because you're in poverty. Jesus came in poverty and 
when he came in poverty, he really kind of slapped the face of those who thought that you had to be wealthy or you had to have all these things in order to be someone in this world. And here was the someone, Jesus Christ, the creator, the one that had given all the oracles, that had given all the word. Here is the one, and he chose to be in poverty. That's amazing surrender, friends. That's amazing humility, right? So um, he says, poverty was made sacred by his life of poverty. He would not put on a dignity of attitude that would debar men and women, however lowly, from coming into his presence and listening to his teaching. So he's saying, what's, saying, what's, what's being said here is that he was never in, a, in, a, in an attitude he never put on this, this idea of, see, here am I, look at me, and, and I'm the Son of God, and look at my dress, and look at the entourage I have. He, he never, it was never that way. He never put on this artifice, because he never wanted to drive away even the one that would deem themselves the most lowly, and the, of, of a low station in life. No teacher ever placed such a sing signal honor upon man as did our Lord Jesus Christ. He was known as the friend of publicans and sinners. He mingled with all classes and sowed the word with truth. In the marketplace and in the synagogue, he proclaimed his message. He relieved every species of suffering, both physical and spiritual. Beside all waters he sowed the seeds of truth. His one desire was that all might have spiritual and physical soundness. He was the friend of every human being. He was not pledged to bring life and light to all. Excuse me, was he not pledged to bring life and light to all who would receive him? Was he not pledged to give them power to become the sons of God? He gave Himself wholly and entirely to the work of soul-saving. His whole life was to help us. Still is. As He went about doing good, every day's experience was an outpouring of His life. In one way only could such a life be sustained. Jesus lived in dependence upon God and communion with Him. He was ever about his father's business, and the only way he was sustained to do that was because he had a vital connection to his God, to, which was his father, excuse me. To the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, men may now and then repair. They abide for a season, and the result is manifest in noble deeds. Then their faith fails, the communion is interrupted, and the life work is marred. But the life of Jesus was a life of constant trust, sustained by continual communion, and His service for heaven and earth was without failure or faltering. As a man, He supplicated the throne of God until His humanity was charged with a heavenly current that connected humanity with divinity, receiving life from God, he imparted life to men. Did you hear that last part? As a man, he supplicated the throne of God. So he went to God pleading and was begging and was, was praying. He, he goes to God until his humanity was charged with the heavenly current, like plugging in, right? And he's got this heavenly current. And that heavenly current connected with humanity with divinity. So the moment we, and there's nothing that we can't accomplish for God if we're connected that same way. We can plug into heaven, right? And then humanity can be charged with divinity. And when we receive that life from God, by God's grace, we can go out and impart that life to other people. What a blessing. What a privilege. Jesus was a friend to every human being. And I want to ask you a question. Are you a friend to every human being that's out there, whether they're poor or whether they're rich? Sometimes it's easier to kind of buddy up with people that are of our own social economic status, or maybe they're a little bit richer than us, or they have a little bit more things going on and more success in their life. And, and many of us want to be drawn toward that. But friends, I'll tell you this. 
Jesus was no respecter of person or pocketbook. He wanted to be with people that were open to what he was saying because he had the truth. He had a way to save them, and he was the way. And I want to encourage you, don't be a respecter of any person, whether they're in a lowly station or in a very exalted station. Both need Jesus Christ. In fact, frankly, it's a little bit more difficult for those who have everything and are in need of nothing to ever want a Savior. I want to encourage you to draw to both. Draw to those who are humble and those who know that they're in need and those who don't know that they're in need because Jesus Christ has the answer for everybody. God bless you and remember, our Father cares for each and every one of us every day. We'll see you tomorrow.